Salvete omnes, this is I'm Amelia, also known as the Martian Geek. When we last left our hero, he had just been eaten and ejected from the World 3 Fortress boss, Prince Froggy. I used to think his name had something to do with the fact that since King Bowser is the boss of the World 6 castle, it would make sense for Prince somebody to be the boss of the World 3 Fortress. But I guess the simpler explanation is just it's, that it's a reference to the Frog Prince. Who knows, maybe it could be both. The big thing about Prince Froggy, though, is he used to freak me out so bad when I was younger. And by when I was younger, I mean until I was about 14. I couldn't even be in the same room, I just had to make my dad do the stage and wait until he'd finished. Of course, Prince Froggy doesn't freak me out anymore, but unfortunately, the Frog Pirates still do. At least with Prince Froggy, it's mandatory to go into his stomach and come out again. With the minor enemy he's based off? When one of those comes onto the screen or I hear that ominous croaking sound, my only appropriate reaction is, oh crap. But I am very glad that that enemy is in only two stages and even then not all that frequently in them. It only appears in the last two rooms of 3-3 and the last room of 3-4. So, that's good. But, this is neither 3-3 nor 3-4. It is... 3-5. Jamming through the trees. It's an athletic stage. And pretty much nightmare free, I guess. So... That's good. Just watch your footing here. And of course, since we're still in World 3, there are monkeys up the wazoo. I guess there is one good thing about World 3, which is that there are several that the watermelons appear fairly frequently compared to some of the other worlds. I mean, I can't think of any other world that has three stages of watermelons in them. This is a potted spiked fun guy. Not fun guy, fun guy. It's a little cactus enemy in a pot. If you manage to get the cactus out of the pot, the pot cannot hurt you, but you can make it into an egg. Sometimes the cactus jumps around without the pot. Now, for this first part of 3-5, I should mention that you really do not want to pound the ground anywhere around here. And in fact, be careful where you shoot your eggs. Because as you can see, the entire floor right here is breakable. Yes, watermelon seeds can go through land even when spat by monkeys. And yeah, Gusty's back. Whoa! Sneaking up on me from behind, too. Come on. Hey, Gusty, Gusty. How did I end up with only two eggs left? Bad aim, I suppose. Whoa! Okay, that was bad. This isn't a perfect run, so I can get hit as, on, as often as I want, really, as long as I still have 30 stars by the- WHOA! And... But who needs to worry about getting hurt when we have bottomless pits below? Yes, I shall try this stage again, and let's try to be a bit more careful this time, shall we? And maybe a bit faster. Whoa! I do not remember pressing down there. I'm pretty sure I did not press down. Or at the very least didn't mean to. Yeah, that's what happens if you ground pound in this first part. So, suggestion, don't do it. Bad idea. Sorry, but I don't like having seeds spat on me, thank you very much. Come on. Into the tulip you go. 
I don't have all day. There we go. Here, friendly tulip. Eat the monkey and give me some stars. Ha, I stole your watermelon. I could have sworn there was a question mark cloud in here somewhere. One of these columns, but... Oh, there it is. Five stars, that never hurts. That potted spiked fun guy is no longer a threat. They really like to overdose on the, mon on the monkeys in here, don't they? Well, I guess 3-1 was called Welcome to Monkey World, so... Okay, back to where we were before, almost. Yeah, you can lick the bun monkey even when he's holding a bomb. This is actually probably one of the more treacher treacherous parts of the stage. It's probably safest to just get most of those coins with eggs. I mean, once again, you can do it directly, but... Eggs are probably safer, or watermelons if you can get down that low. But there's the middle ring, so... And now we're over death spikes. However... Yeah, like I said, death spikes. They're no more or less dangerous than the bottomless pits, though. Did not just happen. Oh, blah. Well, I did not expect to die this many times in this stage. Maybe this one's a little more treacherous than I thought it was. Here, monkey. No offense, but I'm going to steal your watermelon. What am I doing on points? 30, 10, 2, okay. Watermelon seeds are probably the easiest way to get that flower. Eggs work, but watermelon seeds tend to be easier to shoot straight, so... You... are going to be my egg for getting that flower. It's too bad that was the only middle ring in the stage, though. Watermelons. Yes, lovely, lovely watermelons. And red switch. Platform with eggplant on it. Which would not work in Super Mario World because sprites tend not to interact with plat or platform sprites tend not to interact with other sprites. Well, they don't. They just outright do not. But here's a chance to get a few lives. Make up for all the ones I lost at the beginning of the stage. So many coins! Pretty sure if you fall down in a um, bonus, you don't die. But I could be wrong. Let's not test it. Who's laughing now, Mr. Shy Guy? And then we fall all the way back down to the beginning. And back to the main part of the stage. I guess we can go down here first. Oh, well, there are a couple of red coins. And back up. 
I hope your platforming skills are up to snuff in this stage. Don't underestimate it. Hello there, Wild Batui. I believe that's what these guys are called. They resemble regular piranha plants. Uh, but they're green. And they shoot annoying little yellow cactuses at you. Called needle noses, I think. It's the monkey brigade. And I'm going to miss those two stars, aren't I? No. Only nine? I lost that many to the gall darn piranha plant. You are going to die. Okay, that was dumb. As far as I know, all that switch gets you is coins. Those never hurt, right? Whoa! Man, they like to pack the monkeys close in this stage. Okay, is there another... Um, no there isn't. I thought there was a question mark cloud there. Maybe I should replenish my plus stars off-screen. Those are by far the items that get the most use for me. Just because if I don't have 30 stars by the time I get to the end, well... Let's either use one of them or do the entire stage over again. Or I guess just die and redo the last part, but... Considering this one had only one middle ring and it wasn't exactly close to the end, I don't really want to do that. Next up... 3-6. The Cave of Harry Hedgehog. Great start! Ah, stole your cactus. So, at the start of this stage, there are two ways to go. You can take the low road or the high road. And I can never remember where to start out. Too many monkeys in this world! I think going up first is better, but yeah. Okay, yeah. Going up first is definitely better, because you want to get that key as soon as possible. Interesting bank shot. Where's that other star? Nope. Okay, so, the Cave of Harry Hedgehog. It's kind of like, what would you get if you took the second part of 2-3, used different enemies, and made it even more non-linear? The little mousers are back. As annoying as ever. And, we have a new enemy. Say hello to Harry Hedgehog. Quite a harmless little thing, until he gets huge and sticks out his spines. And as far as I know, you cannot jump on, jump on these guys. Which makes sense, they're pokey. Generally, pokey enemies aren't jump on a ball in Mario games. In fact, when they're um, sticking out their spines like that, they're completely invincible. At least I don't know of anything that can kill them. Of course, when they're small, you can eat them, or... Ooh, look at another melon! Here, hedgehog. Yes, now we get red watermelons. I don't... I think this is the first stage they appear in. Correct me if I'm wrong. But red watermelons let you breathe fire. And fire works quite well against the little mousers, and... the hairy hedgehogs in their small form. Okay, I've had quite enough of that noise, thank you very much. Eat Chomp Rock, fools! 
Okay. And yes, just like the ice melon, you can use the fire melon to activate question marks and things. As far as I know, the only red coins here are on the top, but... Can't hurt to get all of them. Of course, all the rest don't look red anyway, so... And it's another mole tank morph. Ah, I'm falling! Ah, phooey. Come on, you idiot. Dig. Not red coins, but... Fortunately, that one does respawn. I guess it is mandatory now that I think about it. Because you need that, um, bouncy arrow thing to continue. I guess it's better than having a time limit that makes you trapped in that form forever. Like the Animorphs do. Okay, double check to make sure I haven't missed anything down here. Hello, Harry Hedgehog. Bye bye, Harry Hedgehog. Is that my egg? You little turd. Whoa! Yeah, that's the problem with those guys, is when they. God oh, dang it! Am I gonna have to use another plus 20? I'm like running out of these things. So now we're on the bottom. Please tell me I don't land in a... Good. Jeez! Yeah, you want the, to get this pipe. And... Make sure there's nothing over here that's relevant. Yeah, see that switch that just dropped down? Why did it do so? Because of that. First switch, hit the second switch, get lots and lots of coins, and then get the flower. So that takes care of that. Yes, I would like some firepower, thank you very much. I have had about enough of you guys. Say hello to some fire! I do love the background in this stage, though. Quite interesting, that. Star, star, star! I don't think I'm going to get six more by the end, but... Oh, maybe not. Or maybe I am. Now here's where your hovering skills really come into play. So, that was 100 points, and there are no more enemies in this last area. Yeah, see, that's why you want to get the key early, because if you don't, you pretty much have to backtrack the entire stage. And, well, nobody likes that. Okay, so I probably should have hit that first, but whatever. Uh, yeah, definitely should have hit it first. I just was afraid that the exclamation mark was what was going to disappear. So, yeah. Just because I got hit a lot of times, a lot more times than I probably should have, doesn't mean this one was hard. Really, compared to the swamp full of lurking terrors that was 3-3, the nightmare fuel that was 3-4, or the high-flying frenzy that was 3-5, 3-6 really wasn't that bad. There weren't that... I guess there weren't that many enemies in it. No monkeys, except at the beginning, and... That one would actually be really, really short if you were just going through it without getting the point items. So, whoops! 
Uh, yeah, my mistake for that. As I was saying, 3-6 really isn't that difficult of a stage, I mean, compared to some of the last few, and no doubt some of the ones that will be coming up. I mean, sure, the little mousers and hairy hedgehogs can certainly sneak up on you and catch you off guard, but they're not nearly as bad as the frog pirates. And the middle ring is in kind of an odd place. Judging by its location, it seems like they expect you to go over that way without having gotten the key already. But if you get the key straight off, you can save yourself a lot of time in that stage. So, I guess that's the end of this one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.